Welcome back to Network Steganography Chapter 2, uh, which is a short chapter on local COVID channels. So um, this chapter is basically uh, there to introduce you to uh, typical COVID channels, to exemplify them, and to um, provide you some yeah, some basic understanding of them. So uh, there are two basic types, um, namely storage and timing channels. Storage channels um, modify some storage location. So for instance, some, some place, in general, some place where we can read and write a value from and to. Um, while timing channels modulate temporal behavior that can then be somehow recognized by a cover channel receiver. Consider two processes, P1 and P2, running within the same, um, let's say, operating system environment. And there are several cover channels feasible and imaginable between um, these two processes in a way that they violate the uh, security policy of the system. So assume P1 would perform some intensive computations to influence the system load and P2 would then measure the system load. So they would use the system load to um, transfer a secret message. Um, P1 could also stop its operation at a given time, T1 or T2, to signal a 0 or 1 bit while P2 monitors uh, the process table to determine whether P1 stops at T1 or T2. Um, also, P1 could either create or not create some specific file in the file system known by P2. And of course, again, P2 would monitor existence of the file um, because this file's existence signals then the hidden information a 0 or a 1 bit. Uh, these simple examples reveal that the cover channels are usually not noise-free because other uh, processes also work with the file system. Um, or, for instance, uh, influence the, uh, the computational, um, the, the system load of a computing system. Um, they also often need a protocol to indicate when the data transfer does actually start and when does it stop. Also, they might apply some error detection and correction mechanisms. I will discuss a, some of these aspects in more detail in later chapters. There are many, many cover channels known. I will just show you two um, more examples, one for Docker and one for Android. So Docker is a container technology. Um, in general, this is this is um, lightweight virtualization technology. Docker technology has shown to be uh, vulnerable to covert channels. So even if you block all network communications between Docker containers, they can still form a covert communication. Uh, if you assume them to be isolated, it's not the case, at least not fully. So Luo et al. Uh, proposed several covert channels, of which I just um, uh, extracted one from their paper. It's one that uses the globally used memory because uh, the containers can um, request the um, re request information about the current state of the uh, used memory on the host system. So, um, and they can of course influence it by consuming memory on their own, which is error prone because multiple systems consume memory at the same time and memory consumption changes on a regular basis. But um, they have shown that it works, so um, they transfer a zero or one bit depending on the value of the globally used memory. So if the globally used memory module 100, I think it's measured in megabytes, minus the globally used memory module 50 is 50, then it's a one bit. If it's zero, it's a zero bit. Um, there are other channels that can be exploited, such as inode exhaustion. So every node in the file system, or every entry, every file has an inode under Unix, uh, Unix der der derivates um, and uh, all the derived um, and 
uh, also the similar systems like Linux and BSD. And um, um, so you have a limited number of inodes per file system, and if you can, if you manage to exhaust all inodes because you create um, an extremely high number of files, then um, um, a container can check by creation, by testing the creation feasibility of a, a new file, whether the inodes are exhausted or not. In Android, there was um, there is actually a plethora of research available conducted over the last 15 years or already 20 years, and um, so in in mobile phone operating systems, it somehow became popular to show that covert channels are feasible. Um, probably also because of their popularity, um, because these systems are found worldwide and they have only few major operating systems um, from Apple and Google that are used by most of the devices. Um, and the goal is usually to establish a policy breaking communication within um, uh, or between actually two sandboxed apps. And in Android, it's that apps have permissions and uh, for instance, the permission to um, access cont uh, the, the contacts. Um, so let's assume one app would have access to the contact uh, to the um, to the contacts, and another one wouldn't. And you would like to um, send information about contact contacts to the app that has no access to the contacts. Okay, so um, here's a sample cover channel from 2013 that we proposed. Um, well, actually, it's four cover channels. I will, however, exemplify one in detail. So um, what I want you to understand is that you can exploit different system characteristics and states. So you can modulate the uh, items in the task list, which is the process list, so to say. Uh, and the screen state, for instance, the screen can be turned on and off. You also have some things like the screen backlight. Or you can modulate the process priority. And then you can, if you uh, exploit multiple of these characteristics at the same time, you can split your COBOL channel into different channels. So here we have one control and one data channel. The control channel tells this recipient when data is starting, when data transmission is starting and when it ends, while the data channel transfers the actual content, the actual hidden information. Sometimes you need some permissions for that, sometimes you don't. This is slightly out of date, but the concept is always the same. So it doesn't really matter which uh, permissions you require, um, but th the point is you can utilize multiple sub-channels at the same time to uh, orchestrate to 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 um, to um, make sure you have a protocol that ensures your covert channel is working uh, in the desired way and not in an uh, in a way that is not synced between sender and receiver. So I will show you covert channel number two that uses the screen state as a control channel and the process priority as a data channel. And the scenario is as follows. So let's assume you have two smart home apps, one for monitoring your energy consumption and one for one app might be an energy advisor. And let's assume, um, again, today usually uh, apps do not need some internet permission, but in this example they have, but you can really use all different kinds of permissions and scenarios here. So this this example is still valid. Um, so the sender app uh, might be the energy monitoring app. It might have access to your contacts because it um, knows um, which room in your home is assigned to which inhabitant. So you can inform everyone about smart home consumption, things like that. And um, so the second app um, is an energy advisor and it might download tips from the internet. But you know that the, um, the energy advisor app, the cover channel receiver in that case, has no access to the contacts. So 
you know that it cannot leak your contact data or you think at least that this is the case you it's your assumption now what we want to establish is a covert channel that leaks the contacts from the sender to the receiver and that can leak it to the internet um, and this is a covert channel because it's not for it's an unforeseen communication channel and it's a policy breaking one um, there are some requirements. First of all, sender and receiver must, must run simultaneously. Secondly, the transmission um, uh, works via the process priority of the sender. And thirdly, the transfer process starts when the user turns off the screen. This is done to, um, to make sure that the user uh, is not uh, noticing anything that is going on. So it would work as follows. Um, here in this plot you see um, both the screen state, uh, it's, the, it's the line here on top, so uh, the screen state can either be on or off. While the process priority is either P or P minus 1. And um, so this is a, basically a straightforward simple covert channel uh, that signals the um, uh, or, or yeah, uh, the, the control channel signals uh, over the screen state and if the screen state is uh, switching from on to off so the user turns off the screen or the screen goes out by itself because after some time the screen um, is turned off with, when no interaction with the phone is taking place. Now that would mean that a transmission can start. So, and what is measured is the time that the screen is turned on, uh, uh, sorry, off, uh, and the process priority of the sender remains P minus one. When it's set to P, the transmission ends and if the time is not long enough, like in this first case, because the screen is turned on again, then the process priority is simply not set to P. Now, let's assume that time is enough and the process priority can be set to P, then the recipient measures this time interval, divides it by some value delta T to extract the value X, um, where X uh, represents the hidden symbol. So assume T is one second, and you want to send an A, then after one second the process priority would go from P minus one to P. If it would the hidden symbol would be B, then it would take two seconds and so on. So this is a straightforward channel, but it works. Um it's not relevant for the exam, but you can have a look at our video that we uploaded. Also here in my original presentation slides, where I've shown a few more sample cover channels for Android and where we discuss more channels in related work that help you to understand how cover channels, especially in Android, work. Um, and that's already it for this short introductory chapter.